Welcome to Electra Online and here we're going to mix another two solutions together to find out what the enthalpy change is going to be. Uh, we're going to do this in what we call a constant pressure calorimeter, which means just a styrofoam cup open to the atmosphere because no gases are created and therefore we don't have to worry about containing them like in a bomb calorimeter. We, have, we start out with 25 milliliters of 2.5 molar hydrochloric acid and 25 milliliters of 2.5 molar sodium hydroxide. So we mix an acid and a base together and the start, they start at initial temperature of 22 degrees centigrade and after mixing the, the reactants, uh, the products at that point would reach a temperature of 38.7 degrees in this aqueous solution. So what is the delta EH, what is the enthalpy change of that reaction? We're going to ignore the MC of the cup, in other words, the heat capacity of the cup, very small, so we're only going to worry about the solution itself heating up, and of course, when we add two 25 milliliter solutions together, we end up with 50 milliliter of solution, and we're going to assume that the specific heat of that solution is very similar to the specific heat of water, so we call it one calorie per gram per centigrade degree, and with that information, let's go ahead and work it out. So here we have our equation, adding an acid and a base together. We end up with sodium chloride and aqueous solution. And of course, the hydrogen and the hydroxide ions meet together and form water. Now, the equation we're going to use is that the heat absorbed by the solution, the MC delta T, the heat absorbed by the solution, is going to equal the delta Q, the amount of heat given off by the reaction, which, core, which of course is going to be equal to the enthalpy change and we put a negative in front of that because enthalpy is always as a negative quantity when it's exothermic so we have to then of course compensate for that with the negative sign so the enthalpy change per the reaction and now we have to realize that how many moles of the substance are in the reaction so we have to look at our, at our equation of number of moles and of course in this case it looks like we just have one mole of hydrochloric acid per one mole of sodium hydroxide, so this is just going to be a one. So it's a formality, but something we need to keep in mind just in case it's not equal to one. And then here, we're going to put down the mass divided by the mass per mole. Now, in other words, this is basically just the number of moles we have in the given solution. Now, how much do we have? Well, we have 25 milliliters of 2.5 molar hydrochloric acid. So if this was a liter of solution, we would have 2.5 moles of hydrochloric acid. So since we only have 25 milliliters, what fraction of a liter is that? So let's work that out. So 25 milliliters divided by 1,000 milliliters, because one liter is 1,000 milliliters. So 25 goes into 104 times. So 25 goes into 1,040 times. This is a ratio of 1 over 40. What that means is that I have 1 40th of a mole of hydrochloric acid in there and 1 40th of a mole of sodium hydroxide. Remember, these are mixed in solution, so most of it is water. So we only have 1 40th of a mole of each in there. All right, so now I think we're ready to go ahead and work this out. We're trying to find delta H, which means I have to isolate delta H. I'm going to move everything else over to the other side of the equation. So here we have MC delta T, which is the heat absorbed by the solution, times one reaction, because whatever is in the denominator here goes to the numerator, so times one reaction, times the number of moles per reaction, number of moles per reaction in the denominator. We put this reaction down here, so that cancels out. And we're going to take this whole quantity right here and put it in the denominator. So this is the mass divided by the mass per mole. And in essence, when we divide the mass by the mass per mole, we get the number of moles. And in this case, the number of moles is going to be 1 over 40. All right. So um, I think we have everything over there. That leaves us with the right side of the equation, just the minus delta H. And in actuality, it's better to take the minus and put it over here and make it disappear from there. So we're simply looking for the delta H, which of course is going to be a negative quantity if it's an exothermic reaction, if it, the reaction gives off heat, which in this case it will. One note of caution, when you add a base and an acid together, it's better to go ahead and add the sodium hydroxide and then slowly start adding hydrochloric acid while you're mixing. Okay, 
So let's plug in the numbers. Minus the mass, well, we have 50 milliliters of the solution, which means we have 50 grams of that solution because water has a mass of roughly one gram per milliliter. And so it would be 50 grams uh, times the specific heat of water, which is 4.186 joules per gram per centigrade degree. Of course, if calories, it would be one calorie, but in joules is 4.186 times the change in the temperature. And we go from, let's see here, 22 to 38. 0.7, that's 16.7 centigrade degree change. So there's my MC delta T, the heat absorbed by the calorimeter. Reaction, and reaction cancels out. So now we have the number of moles in our reaction. It looks like we only have one mole of the reactants. So we put a one there, and then we divide that by, and maybe just to make it better here, just put one mole like so. And in the denominator, it's mass divided by mass per mole. So we don't have to go calculate how much mass of the hydrochloric acid we have and how much mass of the sodium hydroxide we have, we can just simply say, based upon the amount of the solution and the molarity of the solution, we can simply figure out how much, um, how much of the hydrochloric acid we have in terms of moles. Again, if this was one liter of 2.5 molar hydrochloric acid, we would have 2.5 moles, but we only have 25 milliliters which is 1 40th of a liter. So this is, so therefore 25 milliliters, 25 milliliters is equal to 1 40th of a liter. Now, in each liter we would have 2.5 moles. So we have to multiply the times 2.5 moles to get the number of moles in the solution. So 1 40th liter times 2.5 moles per liter that gives us 2.5 divided by 40, or we could say 5 over 80, or 5 goes into 80, 1 over 16 times. So we have 1 16th of a mole, because liters cancels out, and so we end up with moles. That means we have 1 16th of a mole of hydrochloric acid and 1 16th of a mole of sodium hydroxide. The numbers I was thinking of before was if it was just one molar with 25 milliliters, we'd have 1 40th of a mole. But since it's two and a half molar of 25 milliliters, we have to multiply the ratio of how much, how much we have in liters times the number of moles per liter, which is 2.5. That's what we mean by molarity. So now we know how many moles we have. So we can put this down as 1 16th of a mole. All right, now we're set because notice that moles cancels out and centigrade degrees cancels out and grams cancels out and we're simply left with joules. If I can find my calculator here, right here, we can figure out what the delta H is going to be. So we have 50 times 4.186 times 16.7 and times 16 equals, and let's see here, that looks like 55,924, so this is equal to 55.9 kilojoules. And of course, because the negative here, we need to put a negative in here. Negative, and which means it's an exothermic reaction. It gives off that much heat per reaction. And that is the answer for what we're looking for. We're looking for the Enthalpy change, so the enthalpy change in this case will be a minus 55.9 kilojoules for that reaction.